In this video, we're going to talk about the job of prioritizing and batching tasks. You learned in the module we had about learning that the user story map here is a great place to have a, a sort of focal view of your narrative and how you're going to interpret that narrative into your implementation. So if you remember, the x-axis here is time and the y-axis is the priority of your stories. So this is your, if we think of this as a narrative lasagna, it has these different layers here, slices, and the key thing, and this is probably the most important job that you have as a product owner in preparation for your sprint planning, iteration planning meeting, is how do we slice the lasagna, not vertically, like you would slice a real lasagna that you're gonna eat, but instead slice off the very thinnest top layers of narrative so that Let's say these items, these storyboard squares here are a single epic, just hypothetically. I'm not implying there's always three storyboards per epic or anything, but let's say it is. Our job is to figure out what is the thinnest possible set of highest priority narratives that we can implement and create a coherent, testable version of this epic. And the reason why this is so important is that most constantly iterations uh, run late and you're not getting done everything you wanted to get done. This is normal. It happens to everybody. And the typical thing is, well, they, they blame the implementation team. They didn't work fast enough. And that may or may not be true. It's probably not true. Um, but the point is, is that if you're doing a good job as product owner or product lead, then you're slicing this really thinly. And so you may get several of these horizontal slices done during the iteration, but the point is, is that, you know, if you slice it thin enough, maybe this is only, you know, a quarter or a half of what you think you can get done in the iteration, and you know that even if you run behind schedule and you get a quarter or a half done of what you wanted to do, you still have a coherent, testable narrative that you can put in front of the user and observe, and that helps you make sure that you're moving through this cycle that we talked about being so important. So that is the most important job for, from a deciding standpoint for the product owner. And, and the way that the housekeeping for this will often work is if, if we use a Kanban board, and this, these are just some Trello boards. Trello is a very popular Kanban board tool that you may have seen. The product owner and the team overall is probably maintaining one board that moves from idea to product backlog, meaning stuff that's on deck to be implemented, so that any, any idea that comes up or maybe a customer request, feature request, those are all going into this board that the product owner is, is the lead or whoever is you know, the customer and XP, the, whoever's doing that job. And then in the iteration planning meeting, we have the sprint backlog or iteration backlog and that's what, we're, that's what we've decided we're going to work on in a priority order. And then we have the different steps, implementing, testing, reviewing, calling it done as we move through a given iteration. So, this, so items will flow from the product backlog to the sprint backlog, and you'll, you'll work through them. So this is how you can kind of keep this stuff organized. And your job as the product owner is to constantly be sorting these not in terms of functional area or a generalized priority, but in terms of those sort of uh, horizontal strips of lasagna, the thinnest possible implementations that you can get out for testing. So like this. And that's, that's probably the, the, the most important thing. Now, how big should you make your iteration slices? So should we do one week iterations like they do in XP or maybe one to six week, the variability that, that, that Scrum provides for? Well, uh, a good guideline, I would say it's better to start with shorter iterations if you have more uncertainty, your team's new, the thing you're working on is new. That way you get small pieces out that you can test quickly and you can learn faster about how things are going. And everything else being equal, if things are more stable, maybe a longer iteration is okay. Another good way to observe how well the iteration length is working for you is that if you don't really even have time to incorporate all the feedback you're getting about how things are going in an iteration, maybe they're too, they're too short, they're kind of burning too hot. And if the iteration, if your 
finding out things too late, which is very common, then maybe the iteration length is, is too long. And that's one kind of symptom you can use to balance and decide on your iteration length. If you're finding that you need a longer iteration because your, say, testing cycles are taking a really long time, that might be an okay temporary reason to make the iteration longer, but as we'll discuss here as we go forward, then you should probably look at, well, why does testing take so long? Should we figure out a way to phase in more automation? Because as we learned with the Agile methodologies, and you'll hear from some of the case studies we'll talk about, automating builds and testing and all the kind of, um, you know, all the things that don't have to do with actually writing code, um, that is one of the most valuable assets that you, if you ask a team, an agile team that's, that's succeeding and happy, what are some of your most valuable investments in infrastructure, they'll, they'll probably refer to that. So that um, is probably not a good long-term reason to have your iterations be long. So those are some ideas about how long the iteration should be. We've talked about this, this super important task of slicing the content of the iterations in horizontal thin strips rather than going here and saying, well, let's just do all the you know, search functionality first and then we'll move on. And that is a really important skill that you'll develop in the product owner or customer proxy role as you become a successful Agile practitioner.